Andrea Binev. He's going to be talking about the Liquid Galaxy. Thank you, Andrea. Is this? Ah, no, I, I'm listening myself now. Thank you again for being here. I'm going to introduce you to another technology we have here at the stage, at the station, or is at the arena. Uh, the technology is called Liquid Galaxy. Maybe you have had some time around and seen that we have three vertical screens that you can fly around the world with a joystick, we have with a special CD joystick. This is what we are going to talk about a little bit. Uh, for introduction, uh, I have my own company, it's Ponent 2002, and I work closely in this project with another company from New York, US. It's called Endpoint Corporation. For this reason, the two logos are on the screen. Okay. The agenda is that one. I will explain a little bit more about us. What's the Liquid Galaxy? Different four factors we have, because this is the most explaining question here at the, at the party. Everyone says, oh, this is nice, but this is, this is small. And I, I told the people, come to our presentation and you will see, thank you, madam, for coming. And you will see many other form factors we have that are really impressive. What's the technology behind the system? and what things we are doing with that kind of technology. OK, let's go on. I am Andrew Banev. I am handling the projects in this company. And well, about me a little bit, I am a lot, not too much older, but I am in technology from many years ago. And I started, I don't see too many old faces, but I started back in 1986 working for Commodore. I have an office here in, in London for Commodore. It was a long time ago. And till then, I have been involved in many different technology companies, in internet companies, and many other ones. Um, and as I told you, we are a few persons, not, but a few companies or groups working on this technology in the world. The reason is that because this technology is a little bit expensive. The, the system that you have seen outside costs something like $10,000. And not too much people or companies will achieve that, that, that goal if they don't need really this hardware. And we are on end from Vieira, Spain, and by corporation from New York, and our colleagues from University of Westchester, Western Sydney. And also we do some work for Google because this technology is not too much, too much used for other people. And then um, Google see us and ask us to work for them. And we are doing some projects directly for Google for Mountain View, as I told you. <laughs> then what, what's the Liquid Galaxy? We call it a cluster of servers. A cluster, usually in computer terms, means that several computers working together. Okay? And we say servers because this is the, usually the, the, those are not regular PCs. Those are PCs with several uh, complex hardware. And also we have screens. The ones that are outside are only 25, three, 25, 23 inches screens, but we have very big ones. I will show you. And the question is that this brings us the possibility to, to navigate around the world with the contents of Google Earth, but in a very new, special way. Immersive and interactive. If you have tested that, who, who of you have tested the Liquid Galaxy we have outside? Oh, half. Half. That's, that's good. And I have to make a mention because this technology originally was created by Jason Hall. Jason Hall is a Google engineer working in the Maps area. And this way was created in the regular 20% time that Google employees have in the past time because as I think uh, <laughs> it's now gone. <laughs> and then the time he knows his own spare time to make their own projects. But just those are words. Let's see a video. This video is made with Jason Hall, the person that... Let me rewind. Eight screens, 55 inches, in some kind of immersion because the, the, the screens are involving. This video is now three years old. You can see uh, 
a huge space between the screens because at this time their screens have a, a very big bezel. Now we have screens that can have no bezel at all. It's a question of money. But if maybe you have you have seen on the on the Liquid Galaxy we have outside. We have the technology that even with vessels, when we move, the information behind the vessel is is really there, and you don't you don't see with your eye that there is a difference between one screen and the other. This is the Space Navigator, the three joystick we use. The ones that you have tested, that it uh, is a really amazing piece of technology. It's something like 100 pounds. It's not so expensive, and you can get it on special uh, jobs that that has CAD CAM applications. It's normally used for design pieces of industrial pieces and move them in 3D spaces. We also have uh, a search application inside. We can, we can say, for example, look for whatever. And then the, the Google Earth database bring us to that place. Also, we have some context from the ocean. Look, we are now going under the sea. For example, if you want to go back uh, after a presentation to our stage, I can, I can show you the Titanic. We have the Titanic under the sea, built in 3D, and you can, you can look around the Titanic. And also, we have another kind of context. I don't have any presentation, any, any photo here, but uh, Google at this time is recording something like 40 different uh, places under the sea, corals. And they are doing some kind of street view underwater. It's really amazing how the photography looks. And we can show this content here also. Some of you have flying with me or by yourselves in San Francisco. And as we talked before, uh, we cannot get enough speed if we do that only with one machine. For this reason, we need one machine driving every screen. In that case, there is eight PCs, eight servers, with everyone handling each screen. And then the magic is to make them work together. If we go to go right, then all of them will go right, or up, or down, or whatever. Why we say 30, 360 degree view? Because in this case, in that form factor is immersive. The screens are involving you. And all the, the place that your eyes can see, all the degrees, you get information because the screens are around you. Doing the video only we show one screen, but there are seven more screens in a, almost in a circle. Each screen has its own PC. Look at the PCs over under the screens. In that case, the sensation is so different, like the one you have, you can hit, get outside, because outside we have a system that is almost plain. You, you see the three screens. But in that case, and in other ones I will want to show you, the screen involves you, and then it's a fully immersive in, uh, sensation. We have many, or not too many, we have some galaxies, liquid galaxies around the world. These are places where you can see a liquid galaxy. For example, we have 
something like 12 Flickr galaxies around the world in Google offices. In London, there is one. In Google UK London, there is one Liquid galaxy. But we also have this blue Caldir Group London. Caldir is a, is a insurance company in UK. And they have a very nice uh, Liquid galaxy here in London, precisely to show the, the contents under sea. We will see a picture later. And it's very amazing. We have, we have gone to several conferences, and we have also static ones. I mean, installations that the Liquid Galaxy are standing there and can be visited by, by anyone that goes there. Then, as I told you, we have developed many different form factors. I will show you some of them. For example, this is the one I, I built three years ago. This, this is in my, in my hometown. This is eight screens, 55 inches. This is a fiche photo. For this reason, you are seeing it almost immersive. 55 screens in vertical, OK? Uh, we have uh, the 3D navigator, and also we have, we have an iPad. We use the iPad because we can have point of interest program on the iPad. It can be an iPad, an Android, whatever. We have an Android table there outside. And we program them places that we can push and go directly to that place. OK, we can program, for example, London A. We have it outside if you want to test. We push, we push London A, and automatically the Liquid Galaxy goes to that place. And some of you have seen this demo in this morning presentation, but let me show you another. This is the most impressive installation it's done with this technology around the world. I will say nothing. See and feel the experience. Three walls and also the soil. Each wall has two different projectors simultaneously projecting the image. And it's something like um, 400 square meters of projections in one room. And parenthesis, this costs $1 million. If you have the opportunity to go Mountain View at the central offices of Google, you can see that on the Partnerplex building. That is the place where they invite to the, the most important person that comes to Google Plex to see the, all the technologies. And some of them call this the jewel of the crown because when I remember the, the day that we have finished the installation, and in a few days comes, it has to come a very important person. And then that day, the person in security does not allow me to enter, and I say, OK. Remember me. I've been working here for weeks, and you don't <laughs> allow me to enter now. I want to test. I have my badge. OK, I can, I can enter. No, no. No, because we have a very important visit. What happens? OK, Mr. Barack Obama was coming on the next day and was the Secret, Secret Services reviewing all the microphones and so on. When anyone comes to Google to make an official visit, goes to that place and enjoys the full immersivity of the system. It's crazy. You have experiences outside, and it's nice, but here is impressive. Another form factor. This one, we show it on um, past two years ago in the Google I.O. conference in, in San Francisco. Uh, we used to, Google used to hire us for the Google conf Worldwide Conferences. And then we built Liquid Galaxies to show some this technology to other developers that come around the world. We are the unique company from Spain that goes paid by Google to this event. And this was 
called Batman, because we do that, that kind of decoration, and it seems something related to Batman. This was not interactive. This only, this only was looking at several places and making some kind of helicopter turn. It was done because here at this conference, we were introducing the 7.0 version of Google Air that has the new 3D buildings. And the only thing it does is making slow rounds around a city to enjoy the details of the buildings. But there was no, no user interaction. Okay? We built two different models. Oops, I don't have the other slide. We built another similar model. We have two at the conference. This was 2012. And this year, we built two different versions. We built a tracker version. A tracker version was very special. The tracker is that backpack that Google has, that has a street camera that they are using to, to capture some places where his cars cannot enter. For example, the image you are seeing on the screen are the, the um, what is the name? Uh, the Great Canyon of Colorado River. <laughs> then, users come inside the treadmill with a backpack that weighs something like 25 kilos. And then, when they move over the street mill, the screen moves, and they feel the experience how the person that was there has to, has to go with these 25 kilos around the mountains. Okay? They experience like, this, like the person that was there. Okay. This was one of the installations we do, and we do another installation. That we call it the sky diving game. It was very different, and I'm going to show you how it works. Going, this dude. was the day before when we we're, were finishing. On fire. The, the show was not open. This is not done with Google Alert. This is done with Google, Google Maps. And it's a game, full interactive. Uh, Over the screen, there is a Xtion. It's something like a Kinect from Microsoft, but it, this case is from Asus. And it was full interactive. I mean, you move your body, the Xtion captures your gestures, and then you can play are on the screen. <laughs> Some person asked me, why you are wearing Google Glass? And I say, nothing. It has nothing to see. I mean, I was wearing Google Glass for other reasons. The system works only with the Xtion uh, peripheral. Down, down, I down. used to say this, I'm doing the monkey on this video. <laughs> Look at the speed. It's so fast. Here's the big one. In that case, it's Google Maps. Yeah. Oh, Google Maps oh, has something oh. like 30% uh, weight, like the Google Earth. I mean, the data is less than Google Earth. Okay? First try. That's awesome. That's right. You have recorded it? Uh, for example, this, this model is at Monaco's aquarium. If you go to Monaco, you can see that. Look at the, di the difference uh, I told you about the, the screens. In that case, the screens were so expensive that I almost have no bezel. They're one, only so, like a half a centimeter bezel. If you count both screens, it was only a one centimeter bezel. The difference between the other screens we saw on these ones are that the uh, big, huge bezel ones may cost $1,000, and those cost $3,000. Three times the same, the same for the same technology in the screens. But um, we, we get another a very different sensation. It's a, it's a matter of money. And also, you have to count that, for example, here is eight screens. And it's, it's not $8,000. It's $1,600 more for the, for the difference between the screens. It's only a matter of money. Another very special model, Angel. Este es plano. This is plain. This is in, in Paris. If you go to Paris to the Pavilion Museum, you can see it. It's, there are 48 different screens, 32 inches. You can walk over, but you get a, another, a very different sensation. You can imagine. I don't have a video at this time of this. What I can tell you, for example, is that also sometimes we use, we use a touch screen. In that case, this is a touch screen. We use the Space Navigator plus a touch screen. 
and you push buttons and you can go to Eiffel Tower or the Sena or whatever in, in Paris or whatever in the world. We have many different interfaces to, to control the system. Another model, that case is in the State University of Georgia, 46, 30 inches screen, but with some curvature. Okay? And also we, we see a, another difference here. There are four rows of the screens, not only one. There are four rows. And as I told you, each screen has its own PC server. Usually we, we run Linux, Linux, but it can run Windows or Macintosh, but we feel more confident with Linux because Liquid Galaxy is uh, heavy intensive in networking and you have to have a great deal of control of the machine and Linux is better than the other operating systems. PCs has to be the highest bit possible, i7 processor, i give of RAM, and always, always they have to be SSD hard disk because if we use regular hard disk, the system does not work. The, system, the hard, regular hard disks are not able to move that, that quantity of data at the correct speed. This does not happen with the VGA. The, the VGA can be a regular one, a medium price, a 100 pounds VGA, or so, something like a 650, and it works. And as I have explained to some of you that asked me on, on, the, on the arena, the, the, the idea is that any kind of in interactive method we use, the joystick, the touch screen, the, the Xtion, many others we have, for example, we have also Limotion. You know the Limotion, the new interface that will come in a few weeks? That you use your fingers like a Kinect, we have also developed that. Any, any kind of uh, peripheral you use to control, it sends the instructions to the central server. The central server is one of the servers that we have. We can, if we have a system like the one outside with three screens, in the, mid the middle one is the central server. If we have eight or whatever, 48 or whatever, the central server is one of these that receives information from the user interface. Okay, and wh what is the magic? The magic is simply that this PC is sending, broad in broadcast by the network, is sending the instructions to the other PCs to where the user wants to go. If the user moves this, the joystick to the right, the central PC explains sending packets around the network in, in, in broadcast sending. User wants to go right at this direction and at this speed. And the other server listens that and do that movement. And the magic also is that every server on the, on the, on the cluster knows what is his position relative to the central one. I mean, if we have the system like this outside with these screens, the middle one knows that it's the middle. But the one at the right knows that he's 1,000 pixels to the right of the middle because this is full HD. Every screen has 1,080 pixels. Then the first at the right knows that when the user wants to go to the right, he has to move 1,080 pixels plus the movement that the, the, the user wants. The second will know that he has to be two, two times 1,080 pixels. And, and this, go on out. If we have 48 screens, every screen knows where it's located inside the cluster. Google Glass on. What means that? That means that I have to get this back. I don't know if some of you have seen that. This is something that not too much people have seen. This is the Google Glass. Who of you have seen Google Glass by hand? You have touched it? You have had the opportunity? I will show you after. So have me the opportunity. OK. I'm something like a cyborg now. I have the micro, the glass, the remote. Um, I think, uh, what is the, the person in charge? I think that the receiver, the remote is getting out of batteries. It says um, production, hello. Remote is getting out of batteries and, and it's not working. It says it's blinking. I can do it by, by hand. Okay, we try to do some innovation and I explained to you that we have several kinds of input systems and also we have developed an application is the very first one the application for Google Glass. 
uh, that allows us to drive the liquid galaxy by the world glass. The example is that when you are in front of a liquid galaxy, using the voice interface or the touch interface of the Google Glass, we say, for example, Jada or Home City, Jada. But Jada is, is not a, a unique situation, a unique uh, city in the world. There are many Jadas. Then our application is requesting the API of Google Maps and, and returns to you how many places are called Jada in the whole world. And they show, you can see it there, they show that there is a Jada, it's a city, but Jada is also a, a city in Colombia, South America, and Jada also is the, pro the name of the province. And the, the Google Glass application asks you, OK, that's good, but what Jada do you, <laughs> are you asking for? Then you use in the trackpad or the voice, you can say, or you can go the second one, and then you say, go there. And when you say go there, the full liquid galaxy moves and goes in that direction. The same thing we do with the touch screen or with an iPad, OK? This is the very first application we have developed with Google Glass. Why it says here, Liquid Galaxy Mountain Building 36? Because you work at Google, at Dublin. Google Earth has always, they, they, they try, they test their application by themselves. They want to try. They used to, to use the very first ones, their own applications. Uh, Liquid Galaxy Mountain View, View Building 36 is one of the places we have a uh, Liquid Galaxy Mountain View. When you enter in a place that the Liquid Galaxy is and launches the application, the glass knows what Liquid Galaxy is. If we were in Monaco, it recognizes that you are in Monaco. And it's, uh, he knows, the glass is the problem, knows where you are. Another use that we have think about, if you have the opportunity this morning to attend to other conference about the flying defibrillator is to use Liquid Galaxy as the central center uh, for the emergency control room. I mean, Liquid Galaxy can have, as you can see on the screens, the situation of the different drone ports, drone ports where the places where the drone are ready to depart with electricity, with data. And we have also the points where the drone can, can land. Those are the drop points. And also we have some meteor sensors. We, we, we need to have uh, rain sensors, wind sensors, because in several situ situations the drone cannot fly. OK, the Liquid Galaxy can be the system that controls, that allows to control the whole fight project that this morning we show here in this stage. We also have developed a, a, a consistent uh, union of different pieces in our city with the city council, the university, uh, the scientific park where we are, and also my company. And also we have done a larger laboratory for making R&D about this uh, technology. We call it Liquid Galaxy Lab. For this reason, we have ch I have changed the logo, Liquid Galaxy, and I, it's showing now Liquid Galaxy Lab because we have a, a, a 50 square meters uh, with three different liquid galaxies, smaller ones, to develop applications over this. And now I will show you a picture that will make a smile some person that is on the audience. It's Joan. <laughs> you know Joan. It's my colleague. Joan is working on the Liquid Galaxy Lab. And he was one of the persons that, as we work together with Google, we present him to uh, the Google Summer of Code uh, opportunity, and Google uh, gets that person to be an uh, intern for three months in the summer, getting money from Google. He has money from Google, and he's working on projects like this. We say this, whoa, I'm a real intern, because it was parallel when the movie of internship goes, and <laughs> he's enjoying the same situations. Uh, I'm bringing him to uh, him and the other person to many Google offices in the world. And in only a few weeks, we will go to Mountain View, and we have many meetings there. And we will have, we will have more pictures of you and Ismael also <laughs> in different places in Mountain View. We have a web page, gliquidgalaxy.com. And thank you for your time and consideration. And if there is any question, I will be happy to answer you. Thanks.
finishing. You're late. No, I'm not finished yet. Um, so, uh, what is the main use? Because we've seen these in the, these being used for Google Maps or Google Earth. There, I know there are some other uses. Like you said briefly, there's some underwater kind of street view pictures. Yeah. Um, and there might be other uses, like maybe factories or something like that, that you didn't really talk about, um, yeah. at least in depth. Yeah. Can you explain that a little bit? Of course. Um, uh, originally, this technology was think for showing contents on Google Maps, Google Earth. But we are exploring with this laboratory and many projects we are doing, we're exploring to use it in other kind of areas. For example, let me show you, I will go to a, a Chrome browser. And let me show you the ocean context, for example. Um, well, I don't know how to make it bigger, but this machine it's uh, underwater, it's going underwater. It's this usual thing that people that go on the water has, it's a motor and they, they, they go away. But it has a, uh, the camera on the front. It's a camera like the one we have outside, the street view camera we have, obviously with a compartment to, to don't allow the water to go in. And then uh, there is something like 30 to 40 different coral uh, places around the world that they are going to photograph it, and then that contents, you can see it on Street View, but Street View is not underwater. For this, this reason, we use uh, a Liquid Galaxy to, to show that, that picture. Let me try to find one picture. Look at this picture, for example. This is the person going with the undersea camera. And there is a famous turtle. Well, these are not regular photos. These are uh, 360 degree photos. And this is, this is something like they are capturing. You can go to, with a web browser to this page. You can ask about Google Ocean's project. And they will they bring you to this page, and you can explore. Look at the at the arrows similar to Street View. You can you can use your mouse to go there, and then you will move out of the the coral arrecif. Okay, you can see this content on on websites, but what is impressive is in in the Liquid Galaxy because it's immersive. When we have a, a eight screen or whatever Liquid Galaxy, you you see like to be under under sea and also we do that uh, we put some sound usually there is no sound but in that case we 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 put some sound and we put some underwater sound like the bubbles coming out from the and then it's really a, an amazing experience other situations you ask me for example while working in our city in our in our, in our country we are working with the politics in the education area we are preparing a project called Pulga. Pulga in English means flea. The Pulga is a project that um, schools with the same PCs they have already on this, his different uh, uh, classes or laboratories, they can put together some screens, some of the PCs, and then only using one USB, they will put the USB on the PCs and magically, because it's magic, they will have a liquid, a liquid galaxy, OK? Then we are working together with some schools and some teachers and with the politics. I mean politics because we are doing it with a, a, a national agency. And we hope to bring that technology to schools for them to show, to, to teach geography and other, other kinds of stuff. Anything related to geographical places and humanistics and everything, because the world is so huge and happens too many things, and this will be a, a real nice, it's going to be a nice program. We, we are working on it. We have many other things. Any other question? No? 
Okay. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You can find uh, Andrea Ibinez in the live quarter throughout the whole of Campus Party uh, next to the marketplace with a virtual demonstration of the Liquid Galaxy. Thank you. <laughs>